Love is unconditional surrender. Love is yucky, like anchovies and jalapeno. Oh my god, love is terrifying, it's really scary, and I don't know how anyone does it. Love is without a doubt the greatest thing in the world. That's love part of the risk, trailer basically. for author Neil Strauss's new Neil book. For the last six years, he's been on really a journey to answer the question, anything. what is love? love is Not distance. an easy task for it's someone who rose to fame as a world-renowned pickup artist and the man behind the controversial bestseller, The Game. In The Truth, um, Strauss tackles love, intimacy, the strength to be vulnerable, and his long road to monogamy. Neil Strauss is joining us this morning from New York. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Many authors start their books on the first page with an introduction or a dedication to someone that they love in their life. You started yours with a warning on not one but two pages to your wife. How come? Well, you know, when I started writing the book, I was just terrified she would read it because it's all the horrible thoughts I've had, all the terrible things I've done. But the book ends with an entreaty for her to actually read it so she gets to know the real me. So she did read it, and so did your mother. And boy, you go into some pretty deep stuff. What was the reaction? I'll, I'll tell you, her reading it was the best thing that ever happened to our relationship because now she knows everything. And... And now we can actually begin a relationship from a point of the truth. So often we try to protect someone by compartmentalizing part of what we think or only sharing what's going to make them feel good. And it, it was the best thing that ever happened to our relationship, though the scariest thing. So tell us about the journey then uh, between the game and the truth. What happened to you in between? How did you arrive at the truth? Sure, it's, 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 it's fascinating, and, and what, which is that I, I wrote this book, The Game, where, when an editor told me about a secret community of subculture of pickup artists, and I went in half journalistically, but half as a lonely, lonely guy who just never uh, have girlfriends or, or any sort of romantic or sexual experience, and I got swept up into it and put out this book, The Game, that became highly controversial, kind of like you said. And then at the end of it, the next challenge was relationships, where I can meet people but I was just bad at relationships. I was like Mr. Ambivalence, and, and I think a lot of people have this problem, which is you're with someone and you're not sure, are they the one, I don't know, can I do this forever? Then you're not with them and you miss them, and, and I was just caught in ambivalence for every relationship until I realized that it had nothing to do with the other person. It really was all about me and where I was coming from and how I was wired to love or be scared of love. All right, so I'm gonna ask you about a, a couple things related to love, uh, sure. given all that you've been sure. through. Um, is monogamy possible? Yeah, yes, yes, of course. The monogamy, non-monogamy, th these are just choices we make and, and commitments we make. And often, I think what's not discussed is people's problem with monogamy is not like, oh, we're evolutionarily wired to seek variety or what have you. Their problem really is uh, a fear of closeness, a fear of being smothered or controlled of the other, not speaking their truth and building up resentments that lead to acting out. There are all kinds of unconscious forces operating on us beyond just sex. And what about romantic love? Does it endure the test of time? Yes, and that was the biggest epiphany for me because one of my biggest fears was that I would be married or be in a relationship and, and, love, and the love and romance and sex would kind of degenerate into sort of a, a, an awkward, distant friendship. And what I found, the biggest problem is that people parentalize their partner. They turn that partner into a parent, whether through trying to control them, uh, you know, nagging them, uh, uh, resentment, uh, distancing oneself with work or alcohol or obsessive exercising, whatever it may be. And if you don't turn that partner into a parent and continue to get closer to them, it can work out. There's always a pr power struggle phase about three to nine months in. And if you can make it to the other side of that, that's where the beautiful relationship really begins. The book is called The Truth. Neil Strauss, thanks so much for talking to us this morning. Thank you.